right, guys, that's what it looks like right now. We got this side up and I got the other one on the peak up on the other side. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. There we go. Doesn't look so bad. The part up by the peak, that plumbing fitting, I don't know if I'm gonna have to get a longer, let me back off because I'm shaky. I don't know if I'm gonna have to get a longer pipe. That's eight inches. I might have to go 12 because it's, or, or 10 anyway, because it's awfully close to being flat and flush with the roof tile. And I want to have a little bit of a gap there. So a lot of you guys have mentioned that this isn't smart putting it on the roof, put it on a ground mount. I just don't have the room for a ground mount, guys. It, at least, I mean, I have the room. I just don't have a, a good unobstructive place where there's going to be sunlight. I have lots of trees back here. And keeping it up higher is going to be better for um, solar production. Also, I don't want to make a big eyesore down here on the ground. And finally, you talked about having... Uh, it easier to clean off and you mentioned snow a lot of you. I'm on the North Carolina South Carolina border pretty much We don't get a whole lot of snow down here guys So I don't think that's gonna be an issue and if it is it's a couple of days a year I just want to show you guys what I'm doing to get my unistruts to join together here and support them I went to the hardware store and I bought well I bought these just pieces of metal to connect other pieces of metal Kind of a bracing bracket, so to speak. 10 inch mending brace, zinc, made in China. I got those, I'm cutting them in half, so I can double up on them. They were like $4.60 a piece. Cutting them in half, and I got some bolts and some washers, and I'm just sliding it right in between there, right where the brake is, and I'm bolting it on either side. Pretty nice and rigid. I think it'll hold just fine. And that's what I'm gonna do for all of this unistrut and I'm also going to put kind of a piece right in between here going up and down or perpendicular to the racking that's going to be going horizontal against the roof. Hopefully that adds to the rigidity. Hey Mr. Ant, got an ant in here. So that's what we're doing. I got locking nuts and I have washers and I have bolts and they're all zinc and this is supposed to be, I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be. Anyway, I'm aware of the fact that different metals can oxidize and corrode if they're not all the same metal. Uh, but the guy at the hardware store swears to me that he doesn't think there'll be a problem here. So, eh, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I'm still working up here. I'll just show you a couple of things that I ended up buying at Home Depot yesterday. They've sent me that Lowe's didn't have any of this stuff, and they're so much closer to me, and I should have got, I should have made the trip and went to Home Depot and got the right stuff the first time. I went and I got these square washers, and Got some bolts and the spring nuts. And I'm gonna put these, this is what's gonna hold the solar panel down to the super strut. I got a couple of more two by fours, so I have now four across there. And I bought some cabling. And this cable handles 385 pounds per strand. And I'm gonna have four strands coming down. You see them coming from the eye hooks. I went and wrapped it from the eye hook. And on two of them, I'm wrapping them through the super strut as well. Kind of as a backup in case something fails with a 2x4, the eye hook pulling out, I'll have it connected directly to the super strut. Maybe I should have did that on all of them and just forgot the eye hook altogether. I don't know, but I wanted to have something to hold the 2x4 up as well because there's nothing screwing it into the house. So the weight is what's going to keep it. The weight from the solar panels and from the super strut is what's going to keep it up against the house. And the cabling is going to come down, goes all the way down the roof, and I'm going right into the side of the house, right into uh, the framing of the house, into an eye hook. And I have these uh, little 3 8 inch, I don't even know what these things are called, but you see what they are, holding the cable on there. And I put two on there just for a little redundancy, just in case, I guess. And once I get everything up here and fitted on, I'm going to make sure it's all straight. I'm going to pull the cabling nice and tight. And then I'm going to start adding solar panels. And we'll, we'll just see what it does, guys. I'm not sure. Like I said, one big test case here. One big, expensive, dangerous text, test case. I hope it works out. I know some of y'all are watching this thinking that I'm completely insane. And maybe that's true. Maybe I am. Or maybe I'm just completely stupid. Or maybe a combination of the two. Or maybe I'm just a mad genius and this is all going to work out perfectly. We'll see. Stay tuned. I just want to show you what it looks like on the front side of the house. So you got the cables coming down. I'm thinking I'm going to need to put, or I probably should put something underneath the wire there at the contact points at the very peak of the roof. And then again, as you follow it down, when it goes down eh, underneath the gutter at the very edge there, I just don't know what to use. 
Uh, it's something neoprene plastic, maybe some flashing gutter edge, something. Something so it's not digging into the concrete or I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm just making this shit up as I go along. We'll see. We'll see if it works. Well, that stiffened it up a bit, starting to look more uniform. It's not sagging like it was, so that did the trick for that anyway. Next step is I still have a little bit of, uh, I still have some new material for joining up the, it, it's like a thicker, it's, it's made specifically for the super strut. And again, Lowe's didn't have it, and I wished if I just went to Home Depot off the bat and got the right stuff, it would have made my life so much easier. But, be that as it may, I am thinking about um, after I get that done, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up a panel or two and see what that's all about. That's if I can get it up there by myself. I don't know if that's the case. And um, Although this is you know semi-dangerous, I'm not willing to risk life and limb to get it done uh, if I have to wait to get somebody here. I'm gonna wait till my family comes back. We'll see. Okay, so before anyone gets too hypercritical about the way I put the panels up on the roof, understand that I did not want to drill through the cement tile. Those are cement tiles, guys. Lifting them up and trying to rig it that way, ugh, I, I just didn't want to mess with it, guys, because then I'm dealing with the potential leak in my roof and there's big problems there. So that's why I had to try to jerry-rig it in a way that I could connect it to the roof, hold it on the roof, but not have to drill through the roofing tile. So this is what I came up with, and they've been up there for, oh, I don't know, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, something like that. Yeah, we're in the south. We've had some major storms come through here, 40, 50 mile an hour gusts, and so far so good. So before you beat me up and say this is terrible, and uh, so far it's working. Now, of course, if this Hurricane Irma monster storm comes up through here, all bets are off. But I would uh, I would say all bets were off if we get a monster storm regardless. Now here's what I got, for better or for worse. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I did a little bit of research. And I do have to go to the top, which is a bit of a pain in the butt getting those wires to twist around. But we got it done. It ain't pretty yet. I don't know how pretty I'm going to get it, but gonna be prettier than that when all said and done. So I got all four of the negative strands tied in there, all four of the positives up top. And I just, I got the ground wires run last night. I don't know if I told you that in a prior clip. Ouch, I keep hitting my friggin' head on this ladder. So I got the ground wires run down into the combiner box. Then from the combiner box, I got it going into the load center per the wiring diagram. And then I also grounded the charge controller. And I got a bunch more grounding to do. I have to take a ground wire from the load center down into the main grounding rod that the whole house is basically grounded to. And after I get that grounded, then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go up top. I'm going to plug all the MC4 connectors together into the panel strings. I'm going to turn this on. Well, no. Then I'm going to wire up the battery. So I'm going to bring the battery lugs. I got to cut holes and run conduit from the battery box into the load center. And then I'm going to turn on the DC side of this and have the panel start charging my batteries. Yay, getting closer. Okay, so Spaghetti Factory still looks not pro. It's amateur at best. But I'm fixing to put the cover on here. I got everything grounded to the best of my ability. And after I do this, I'm going to go up on the roof. I'm going to plug in the PV arrays. So there'll be juice coming down to these breakers here on the positive lines. And... Then I'm going to hook up the battery, so there's juice going from uh, the battery into the load center, juice coming from the combiner box into the load center and the charge controller, and uh, then flip the breakers, and hopefully we have juice going to the batteries, charging them up, because they need a good charge. I'll probably equalize them as well. All right, I'll show you when I get this cover on and get some other things done. Okay, we got all the positives and negatives hooked up to the four strands going down. Strain relief on the conduit right there. It's going all the way down and around. You saw the conduit on the other side. So now we have electricity flowing from the solar array down into the combiner box. Next step is to connect the battery cables to the lug terminals. And they're already connected in the load center. And then I just flip the breakers. 
and see how that works. Kaboom! It's starting to look a little prettier. Got the cover on there. Well, you got the faceplate, not the cover. I'm about to put the cover on. A little better. Alright, there it is with the cover on. The high voltage sticker. It says, don't touch, you're going to die. Uh, I didn't tighten it. There's just those two screws at the bottom of the panel there. I didn't tighten it down because i got to get back in there and flip the breakers. After I get the battery box all hooked up, I just got to hook up the positive and the negative and tighten down all the terminal lugs from when I connected them last week. Stand by. Ain't that just a beautiful scene, gang? All right, so we got the unit hooked up. I got good news and not so great news. Um, the batteries are hooked up and I damn near blew myself up with it because uh, I touched. Yeah, I'm using metal tools and I had a socket set and I dropped it. And I actually, anyway, it was scary. I'm not going to get into it, but that is what it is. The battery bank seemed to be fine. I went through and I tested each battery with a voltage meter, checked it, and then checked it all when I wired it up, and it was at 50 volts. So um, I have four strings of three panels each connected into this combiner box system up here, and I checked each string to make sure that it was producing, and guess what? Number four is not producing. So that means I got something wrong with my wiring, uh, either up near the panel or anywhere down through the conduit, and that's going to be a pain in the tuchus to figure out. Unless, uh, well, yeah, it's going to be a pain in the tuchus to figure out. And I'm going to have to rip stuff through the... Uh, it's a nightmare. I don't even want to think about it. Good news, I got three strings working. It's after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I got you know a little over 1,000 watts coming in, which isn't great. But it's later in the afternoon. So um, I just had over 1,400 watts coming in like five minutes ago. So we just hooked this up. Um, some success. I'll call it semi-successful. At least we have the DC side hooked up. I got to work on figuring out why my number four string is not producing. And it's got to be one of the wiring places I did. And yikes. Anyway, we'll get that figured out. And then I got to get working on the AC side. And there's a bunch of little things I got to tidy up. But um, we made it this far so far. And we're still alive. So hooray us. All right, y'all. You remember maybe if you watched my live stream the other night, Sunday night, remember that I said that string number four was not working down at the disconnector box. It was not bringing in any power. Y'all gave me a bunch of tips. First thing I did was I went and I checked by the connector box, and there was no juice there. So then I came up here, and I disconnected the MC4 connectors and put one in positive, one in negative, and I am getting 127-ish volts right here at the panel. So... Obviously, or it seems obvious at this point after troubleshooting, that the problem is in the wire that I ran down through the conduit. That is a problem because it's going to be a real bear to get off and get it up through the conduit. I'm not going to be able to run another wire down through there because it's packed a little too tight anyway to do that. So what I'm going to have to do most likely is uh, run the wire next to the conduit and maybe zip tie it to it, maybe to the back of the conduit. I'll do the best I can. Gotta get her done. Jungle,